Hi, this is Brandon Moon with Moonlit Fly Fishing. I want to welcome you to fly tying night tonight. Tonight we're going to be tying up a really cool pattern. This is what I call the MSU Snowshoe Caddis Mini Hopper. Okay, very versatile fly. With that I want to make sure and invite you to like the video make sure that you leave us a comment make sure that you hit subscribe and the bell to receive future notification if you get any kind of value out of this video we'd appreciate it a great deal if you did that for us as we try and continue to put more out and help get seen by more people so with that the hook that we're using today is the moonlit premium tagata barbless hook the ml 102 the thread we're using is Semperfly's Classic Wax 12 aught in a rust color. So we're going to start that thread at roughly the three quarter point in this hook. We're going to wrap and create a nice thread base all the way to the back bend of the hook where I'm going to tie in a rusty spinner colored wild barred turkey by it. It's a premium turkey by it by Magpie. I'm going to tie that with the ridge side on the downside and the translucent side up top. Now I'm just going to take and create a nice little taper to my body with some thread wraps going forward and backwards. And I'll do that a little bit more on this than I would with a Mayfly pattern because I want a little bit more bulk in this body and this pattern I fish it during a caddis hatch or as an attractor for mini hoppers just a searching pattern at times or sometimes if I'm throwing a smaller nymph and I don't want to throw a real huge dry I'll throw this one with a little dropper below it so a very versatile pattern highly effective especially during the summer months when you've got beetles, hoppers, and a bunch of caddis hatching. So tie it in a variety of different colors as well. So once I've taken and created that little taper there, I'm gonna half hitch this and set it off on the bobbin rest to the side. I'll take my hackle pliers and get that by it. Now I want to make sure that that ridge side of that by it is on the back side of this hook. And we're just going to take and use the rotary feature of the Nirvana vise to create nice even wraps and taper to this body. And we'll wrap that all the way up into that three quarter point. Now we're just going to take and secure that off with our thread. I'm going to secure that down with two wraps over the top of it. Two wraps locking it in place. And I'm going to set this off to the side just so that I can cut this by it off. And ensure that I don't cut my thread. I'll just finish securing that down. I'm going to create a nice thread base over the rest of that hook shank and go back to that three quarter mark where I'm going to stop. I'm going to take some two, two millimeter fly tying foam. I'm doing orange because I want it to be a little more visible. It's going to be just a little bit thinner than the hook gape. And this is a wider hook, hook gape than a normal standard hook gape as well. I'm going to have that hanging back over the body just a little bit. And we'll just secure that in. And that thread base is going to help give that foam and overturned wraps something to grip on. 
so that it stays nice and secure. That foam's just gonna kinda help push my wing up just a little bit. All right, now that we've got that secured in, I'm gonna take some micro legs. These are the fluorescent orange, and I've cut them into fours for the size 14. And I'm just gonna secure that in. And I'll measure that so that it goes to the back of that fly. And I'll wrap that all the way up into the eye of that. Now I'm going to bend that around. Pin it in place with the tip end of that being at the back side of that body again, just like the other one. Now I'm just going to secure those down nice and snug. All right, now we're gonna take some rust-colored snowshoe. Snowshoe is really awesome. It's naturally water resistant. So it makes it really buoyant and floatable. It's gonna float really well. It's also gonna take your dry fly floating really well. So I'm gonna take a small clump, clean out the guard hairs on both sides. I don't level these out. I just got a small little clump. I'm going to measure that out to be so that it ends up on that tip end. Secure that down. Now I'm going to take and trim out just the tips or butt ends of some of those fibers. One more wrap for good measure. I'm gonna take a little bit of rust kapok dubbing. And this is just to cover up my thread. It's not to add bulks. So the kapok is gonna give me a nice, nice dubbing noodle on here. And we're just gonna wrap the thorax of that so that we don't see thread on the underside. I'll fold that foam back over the top. Three wraps. I'm going to pull that down to snug it. Now I'm just going to take my whip finish tool. One, two, three. One, two, just for good measure, added safety. Another good option to do here is just add some head cement as well to help secure that down. Now we're gonna trim this off just a little bit right back here, nice and short. Two little angles, bam, it's done there. If I need to, I can trim those up just a little bit, but they're about just perfect the way they are. Little head cement, you've got a real durable fly. Thank you for watching. We want to invite you to make sure that you leave us a comment, like the video, hit subscribe and the bell to receive future notification if you got any value out of this content whatsoever. We appreciate your support and want to thank you for watching us tie up the MSU Snowshoe Balloon Caddis Mini Hopper Pattern. Very versatile. We hope you enjoy it and tie up some of your own. Have a great night.